Hey everyone, I want to show you how to use my Blender dice template that I've made. Um, I know that there is a dice generator um, for AutoSCAD and it's super useful, super powerful, especially for someone who doesn't know any modeling. Um, you can go in there and tweak pretty much everything. There are a few things though that it can't really do. Um, and if you've gotten really advanced or, or really try to dive deep in there, um, you might have run up into one of those issues. And if so, I think this is for you. Um, otherwise, for those of you with more um, beginner to intermediate Blender skills, this may also be something that you are more comfortable with. So um, let's take a look at this. First off, I have um, directories here with every single die, um, and then a few alternate shapes, uh, more common ones that I know of for all of these shapes as well, um, with more facets. Um, so the first thing we want to do is, or the first thing I want to point out is that all of these um, numbers are thought objects right now. They're curves. And what that means is that they're not actually like geometric meshes. They're just, um, I mean, there's just a, a, a number of curves and text. So what we can do with all of these is edit them as much as we want without changing the geometry of our dice, not committing to anything. We can play around with these a bunch. Um, before we actually want to carve in our numbers, which is really useful. Um, so, for example, let's say I, I'm over here with our d6, one of our more, more common dice, um, and I want to change the font. Font's kind of boring, let's be real. So, I can come over here and hit folder. Uh, this is going to pull up all of our Windows fonts. I'm going to uh, pick what I know that I like personally is Cabazon here. Uh, and hey, there we go. Uh, I could manually do that for each of my dice, but or each of my numbers, but that's going to be a lot of work. Uh, so instead, I'm going to go over here to this D6. Here you can see everything in this um, this category that I've made, uh, or collection, I guess. At the top of each of them, I have the name of the model with a period in front, and that way it's always at the top, so it's consistent across all of these. Um, so for example, the D4 is going to have period D4. You get the idea. Then you're going to see all your font objects, and they should have this little curve next to them. It means that they're a curve. Uh, additionally, they should have this font icon next to them. You get the idea. What this means, though, is we have this really powerful tool down here where we have there's object data properties uh, for fonts, and we can change things like the extrusion, like how much it's been extruded. Uh, so we can change our depth. 0.6 means that we're going to have a 3 millimeter of depth because we have our origin here in the center. Um, do, 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 do. And because I know you're, some of you may be like the, the math isn't adding up, it's about 10 times bigger than it should be, but that's because when you actually export these to as an SDL, for whatever reason, um, it's always 10 times smaller. That gets a little bit confusing. So there's that. Um, but I want you to be very careful. Well, let me rephrase. Another thing you can do is change the scale. Uh, you can also use this offset X and offset Y to change from the origin where they're going to appear. And you can either manually type the, these numbers in or drag or shift drag to make it slower and more refined. Additionally, if I hit tab at any time, I can change whatever number or font I have going on here. So let's say I have 20 or 17. <laughs> 17. I am going to say this number looks a little bit farther spaced out than, I'm, than I would otherwise want. And so I can also turn down this character spacing, get them really close together. I think that's amazing um, for a lot of the things that we want to use. The same thing goes for word or line spacing. That's um, changing up the space for actual spaces or line breaks. You get the idea. So that's cool. Uh, this can also change your alignment. Oh, excuse me, this should be one. Um, so this is left of center, right of center, just about, you get the idea. Um, for almost everything, you're going to want center center, which is what I have all of these set to by default. Um, you could also technically underline these and all that fun stuff. Uh, this gives you those options. Um, and you could change different fonts for if you have them bolded or italicized. I'm not going to play with any of that. Uh, what you want to be careful, though, is once you are, if you're playing with scale, um, it does throw off whatever bevel you've made. So you can see these are now 1.49 as opposed to 1.2. 
be careful. Uh, you can do one of two things. You can either manually set your depth here or um, make sure to hit control A and apply your scale and make sure that your extrusion matches your depth here. Um, just be careful with that. It gets really funny and it doesn't seem consistent to me, but um, I'm sure there is a method to the madness. Uh, it's just something to keep an eye out for. Anyway, uh, once you like all of these, or like once you've got the font that you like, um, go ahead and select all of the text for that die, uh, or the ones that you want to change. Make sure that this is the last one that you have selected, so it ha should have the extra bright orange. Uh, 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 you should have selected the die that you want to um, match the font for. So we're going to hit Control L, link fonts to text, and now they will all match up for us, and we're all done with that. Once we're happy with this, I can hit uh, right click and convert to a mesh. Now these are going to get this little mm, almost Triforce looking option. And these are 3D models. They're good to go. Uh, and so now I can uh, either, I want to carve them from this block. So I'm going to go to this block, this die here, and I hit a modifier. I want to add a Boolean and I want to difference this Boolean. Uh, you may need to toggle between fast and exact. Fast is, like it says, fast. Exact can be more accurate. Uh, it's more slow. Uh, but if you have an issue with your uh, booleans that swapping between these two doesn't solve, you can also enable this self intersection. But at that point, honestly, your whatever mesh you've made is probably messed up. It probably has some self intersecting geometry and you're going to have a sad time trying to figure that out. Um, so most everything should be accomplishable by just hitting fast. Now, I want to point out, uh, in this case, I have done D6-3. <laughs> I have those swapped. Sorry about that. I have to change those text names. Uh, but in this case, I'm going to... Let's do that right now. Sorry. Uh, just make things a little bit less confusing for a second. I'm going to carve out this D6 5. So now that I hide this with H, you can see that I have done that. Or I can select all of this text, join it together as one item with Control J. And now when I do that same thing and I apply it with Control A or apply all, whatever makes you happy, I've carved out all at once and save yourself a bunch of time that way. Um, that said, before you convert all of this to uh, a mesh, I would recommend saving so that you can, or backing up the original file. Um, that way you uh, can always go back to this and edit it pretty quickly. Um, or make copies of all of these. So once I'm happy with my text, I can hit Control D to duplicate, or excuse me, Shift D to duplicate. Uh, and you should see all your duplicates here, and you can hide those or whatever you like to do if you're trying to keep it back up. Personally, I'll probably make like another collection, throw it back up in there. You get the idea. Let's say I really like uh, this faceted version of the V6 instead. So what I'm going to do is grab it uh, and then grab with shift click my other D6. Control C to copy. I'm going to copy location. If this, uh, if this does not pop up for you, I want you to go to Edit and Preferences, and Copy Attribute should be in there. You want to enable that. It lets you uh, enable a lot of really helpful options. Uh, so we're going to Copy Attributes, so I'm going to Copy Location. And now I can select the big block and hide it. And this is the exact same die, just with some beveled corners. And every all the positioning is the same and everything like that. That goes for all of these dice. Um, I can make a duplicate of this. And again, just copy, paste my location. And now I have my faceted D100 in that case. Um, for the D4, I think that's the most unique one I have here in terms of how this text is laid out. I'm going to hit uh, Alt-Z, so I'm going into like X-ray mode. You can see what's going on here a little bit better. 
If I select one of these, I decide I want to change it. I'm changing all of these at once. Because more than likely, that's what you want to do. If that is not what you want to do, you can select all of these in our D4. D4, 4, 1, 4, 2, 4, 3. So select all those. And I'm going to go to Object, Relations, Make Single User, Object and Data. And now all of these are going to be their completely own unique thing. Changing one will not change the other if you want to do something really weird. Uh, but otherwise, these are intentionally linked like that. Um, when applying scale, because they're linked, this is one last unique thing. Uh, because they're linked, let's say for whatever reason, I want to make them really tiny, and I hit Control A to apply scale. I want to get this weird issue. You will have to make all of these individual things to apply the scale, and it'll throw up your positioning a little bit. Put everything back the way you like it, uh, and then once you do that, you can just carve it. Sorry about that. There's not a great option for that, though. Um, I think that's about it. Um, if you have any questions, you can always leave a comment or question below. I have Rombic D20s, or D12s here, regular D12s. Uh, again, all these are imminently changeable with uh, by changing the I sure hope I'm using the right vocabulary word right there. It's been a while. Um, you can change the scale, positioning, size, all of that through this font menu, or by hitting the letter S for scale, and either X for the X-axis, Y for the Y-axis, Z for the Z-axis, and in this case, uh, its rotation is a little off, so you may need to ZZ to do it according to its normal, or YY or XX, you get the idea. Uh, again, if you have any questions, please leave a comment or send me a message. I'll be happy to help out how I can. Uh, thanks. I hope this helps someone out.